welcome to Stoichiometry in Black and White with Mrs. Plybon. Before we go ahead, there are some concepts you need to be sure you know before you attempt this tutorial. You need to understand how to balance chemical equations, calculate molar mass, and do unit conversions. If there are any of these that you do not understand, stop the video and go watch one of the other tutorials before proceeding with this one. There are also some terms you must know. If any of these do not look familiar, look them up. Become familiar with them before proceeding with the video. If you've been doing things in the order in which I asked you to do them, you've already listened to my podcast in which I explained to you that we use stoichiometry every day. So I won't go into all that again. What we'll jump right into is solving stoichiometry problems. So here I have a stoichiometry problem up. How many grams of water can I make from 25 grams of hydrogen gas and an excess of oxygen gas using this equation? The first question that we have to ask is, is this equation balanced? And the answer is yes. If you don't understand how to tell if something is balanced, you need to stop the video and go learn about balancing equations before proceeding. The next question we have to ask is, what do we want to know? Well, we go back to the problem and we see that what we want to know is how many grams of water will be produced in this reaction. As with every science problem, whether you're in physics or chemistry or whatever, you always start off with what we know. What we know is 25 grams of hydrogen gas, or H2. So we'll start there. Make a t-chart beginning with the 25 grams of H2. And look, I've made a mistake. It should be H2 and not H2O. Well, it was simple enough to correct that. I'm glad we caught it. We know that there is a certain number of grams in one mole of H2, which is molar mass. Can somebody calculate the molar mass of H2, please? That's right, it's 2 grams, because we have two H H's, which each is 1 gram. Now, how do we get from H2 to H2O? Because what we're wanting is H2O. Well, what is a relationship that we know of that's equal to 1 that we know between H2 and H2O in this equation? Looking at the reaction, we have two molecules of H2 on the left side and two molecules of H2O on the right side. So we use that in our next step of the of the t-chart. You can also put one to one because the twos reduce. So we're looking for grams of water and so far we've gotten ourselves to moles of water. What relationship do we know that's equal to one about moles of water and grams of water? Yep, you guessed it, molar mass. Can somebody tell me the molar mass of H2O? Well, there's two H's, and there's one oxygen, which adds up to 18 grams. Next, you can do the math. Simplify your chart, multiplying everything on the top, drawing a line, and multiplying everything on the bottom, which leaves you with the top divided by the bottom. And we have our answer, 225 grams of H2O. What if we run into a question that has something to do about limiting and excess reactants? Well, excess basically means that you're going to have a whole bunch left over. It's kind of like the peanut butter in my analogy in the podcast. Limiting means it's the reactant that determines the limits of how much product we'll get. It's like the bread in my analogy. To do problems where you don't know which is limiting, you'll do two calculations. You'll have to do one for one reactant, one for the other reactant, and the one that has the least amount of product is the limiting reactant. Let's try another. Take a little time to read this problem. What will we start with? That's right, we'll start with the sodium hydroxide because the excess means that we can cross that one out. It doesn't matter to our calculation. To start with what we know, 200 grams of sodium hydroxide. Next, we'll have to calculate the molar mass of sodium hydroxide. 
find the molar ratio between sodium hydroxide and sodium sulfate. Have we made it there yet? We're left with one mole of we're left with moles of sodium sulfate, and that's not what we were wanting. We were wanting grams of sodium sulfate. So we'll have to calculate, you guessed it, molar mass. After calculating the molar mass, we've come up with 142 grams. And if you can't follow how we did that, you may want to stop and watch the molar mass calculation tutorial. We do the math, and we end up with 355 grams of sodium sulfate. Here's one for you to try. Once you've worked this problem, turn it into your teacher for some extra credit. You'll get some points just for trying, even if you don't get the answer right. One tip. You see where it says, assuming that you have an adequate amount of lead-4 sulfate? That's basically telling you just to get rid of lead-4 sulfate. It's not going to be important in your calculations. Good luck, and let your instructor know if you have any questions.